So I wanted to find out first about you all and who is in the audience. If you're a parent of an adolescent, raise your hand. Okay. Parent of a young adult? Teachers, educators, um, students? Okay. So that's good that, that not all of you are parents of young adults because I want to speak today about um, that transition moving from adolescence to young adulthood, which is not easy. Um, how I got into this, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> um, but I've been um, practicing in Atlanta for about 20, 21 years, and my practice just sort of gravitated toward working with special needs, autism, autism spectrum, Asperger's, learning disabled, attention deficit disorder kids and adolescents over the years. And um, I've worked with many of them and many of them for many years because once they start working with me, we just sort of hang out together for a long time through the developmental stages. And what I started noticing as the kids I was working with, who start, I started with when they were six or seven or eight, and all of a sudden they were 16 and they were 17, and then they were 18, and then they graduated from high school, then there was nothing. And I grew pretty concerned about my kiddos and what was gonna happen to them as they grew up into adulthood. And so um, about four years ago, I started traveling around the country and visiting programs that were designed to help with that transition. And I really wanted to find out who was doing this well, who really understood autism spectrum, learning disabilities, ADHD, and all the things that these kids needed to be successful, independent adults. And that's how I transitioned to doing um, primarily the consulting that I do. And so I'm on the road a lot. Um, so what I see is I see this clip the kids are falling off of after high school. And, um, you know, I, and I started thinking about that and what's different for these kids is that they start school, a lot of these kids are starting school in preschool with a lot of structure. Many of them have IEPs, they have people surrounding them, they have a structure for 12, 13, 14 years. They have built-in friends. They have somebody telling them what to do, and they have a schedule, and it's predictable. And even though there may be hiccups, and it may be difficult at times, um, there's always a place to go. And everybody's talking about graduation, and isn't this gonna be great, and you're gonna go to college, and you're gonna be an adult, and there's something missing in between. Um, after high school, what happens is that's just, there is no more structure. All of a sudden you have to create your own structure. You have to get a job or go to school, get up in the morning, figure out how to socialize with peers who you're not seeing every day anymore. And it's really, really difficult. And um, a lot of kids wind up staying home, playing video games, staying in the basement, and really not progressing. And it's really hard to get them out of, out of that rut. Um, so I was thinking today about what I wanted to talk about, and I want to talk about what do we need to do to be an independent, functioning <coughs> adult. And, you know, it's not just people on the spectrum, it's not just people with learning disabilities or ADHD that struggle with this. There's a huge population of young people who don't know how to do anything. And they're called failure to launch. And they don't leave home. And they struggle, but they don't struggle with these things. They struggle with other things. So I made a short list, which got longer and longer. And if you think about it, these are the things that the kids need in order to be independent. They need to learn how to deal with money and budgeting and know that the ATM card doesn't have an endless supply of money at the end of it. 
and that sometimes you're going to be overdrawn and that you need to figure out what to do with that and you need to work within a budget. A lot of kids don't really know how to do that. Um, if you are on your own in an apartment, you have to pay rent, you have to pay utilities, you have to pay your cable bill, your internet bill, um, and everything else. And just learning all that is something that kids aren't being taught in school necessarily. They're not being taught that in high school, and it doesn't happen through osmosis. Um, time management. So all through high school, kids are told, okay, here are your classes. This is what you're going to do. You're going to start school at 8, and you're going to finish at 4, and this is, these are your scheduled hours, and you're going to get up, and you're going to catch the bus, etc., etc. Well, now all of a sudden you have to manage that independently. You have to learn how to not only get up, but to go to bed. And I see lots and lots of kids, and they're not going to bed. They're in bed with their phones. They're playing the Xbox until all hours of the night, and they can't get up in the morning because nobody's telling them how to do this. Um, if you're in college, you have to learn how to kind of delegate your time and when to study and what to study and just how, how are you going to use your time. So these are skill sets that a lot of our kids don't have. Um, it goes without saying that you need to, have to learn how to organize everything. These are executive functioning skills that um, are very limited for a lot of folks on the spectrum and with learning disabilities. The ability to problem solve is huge. Um, I thought back on my last year of college. I went to school in a foreign country where there were no scholarships and there was no financial aid and I ran out of money in March and I was graduating in May. And I was kind of like, what am I going to do? And I asked somebody, and anyway, so it was about um, $700 short and I had done really well in school. So I just took a chance and I walked over to the I don't know, the place that gives money, whatever that's called. And I said, I am stuck. I said, I'm an American citizen, and I need money, and I need this much to, to finish. And they said, well, it just so happens we have the scholarship, and you qualify for it. But I took that problem and that obstacle, and I figured it out. And if that hadn't worked, I would have done something else. And what I see with our kids is that they struggle with that. When they hit a wall, they stop, and they sit down and they, they don't know what to do if they hit an obstacle. And there are many problems to be solved in college. For example, in high school, if you have a problem, your resource teacher, your special ed teacher, your counselor is gonna come and it's gonna help you. In college, you have an accommodation plan, most likely, through the Disability Center, but if your teacher doesn't have that or is not implementing it appropriately, you have to know how to handle that. And I've known students who had great accommodations, but the teacher didn't know about it because nobody had told the student, okay, you actually have to take this piece of paper and you need to hand this to the person, <laughs> to the teacher, and if the teacher gives you a hard time, that's actually illegal and they're not allowed to. And so it's not enough to just say, go get your disability services, but to problem solve through that is a, is a real struggle for our kids. And I've known a number of students, a number of clients that I've worked with who have um, bombed out of college because that accommodation plan was not, um, not followed because they couldn't figure out how to problem solve. Um, social skills. We all talk about social skills. We put our kids in social skills groups. There are counselors in school that do social skills training. People come to my office, we work a lot on social skills. So um, in college, it's exponentially more, or, or just even in a, a job out in the world, it's so much more complicated and demanding. Um, who are your friends? Who's really your friend? Who's gonna take advantage of you? And who's gonna help to sort of monitor that and help you through that? And, and how do you even make a friend? And, and, Folks with um, these kind of issues just really have a hard time figuring all of that out.
taking care of your hygiene. There's probably moms that I know in this audience who remind their kids every day to brush their teeth and put on their deodorant and have a struggle with that. Um, I mean, I, if I had $50 for every parent who's used time with me to talk about teeth brushing, I would be so rich because that's like a constant issue. My kid won't brush his teeth. And what happens when you're on your own? Are you brushing your teeth? Are you putting on deodorant? And that plays into social skills. Who's gonna to wanna to be around you if you smell bad? And, and so they need support around that. Um, what do you eat? Can you cook? What can you cook? Can you grocery shop? All of these are skills as well. Um, controlling yourself. Can you control yourself? Can you follow the social rules and um, kind of monitor yourself in different environments? It's very challenging. Um, and can you regulate your emotions? And these are things that kids are working on through elementary school, middle school, high school, but they continue need to need support with that as they enter adulthood. Because if you have a job at Kroger and you get mad because your break is late and you scream at your manager, you're most likely gonna get fired. So the consequences are way more severe. And I'm sitting here thinking we're supposed to be thinking positive and we're gonna get there. But <laughs> it's daunting. These are the things that we need to be independent. Um, we also need common sense. And that's a struggle for a lot of these kids. Um, the one thing I didn't mention is intelligence. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to be smart. You need to know how to do all those other things in order to function well. And what a lot of parents really kind of ride or, or really kind of count on is that their kid is bright. And so many of these kids are so smart and they're so bright and they know so much about certain things, but they don't know about these other areas. And just being intelligent is not going to teach you how to be an independent functioning adult. So being smart is a good thing if you need so much more. So I thought I would talk about a couple of young adults that I've worked with. Um, so, I work with a young man who was originally diagnosed as Asperger's, but probably is now what we call social communication pragmatic disorder, which is sort of like Sheldon on the Big Bang Theory, is his diagnosis. Um, he's 19, he spent an extra year in high school and graduated in the spring, and he was in the yearbook with superlatives in six areas. He was voted most likely to succeed. He was voted most likely to become president of the United States. <laughs> I mean, he was a popular, popular kid. When we talked about friends, he talked about having, I don't know, 100 friends. And I said, really? Who's got 100 friends? Who has time for that? And he said, really, I do. And we started listing all the friends. And he really did have that many friends in school. Um, he drives. He works, he manages money, he's doing okay, right? Well, so then he graduated high school, he decided not to go to college right away because he realistically thought he wasn't ready. And within a couple of months, he stopped socializing with anybody. And he became really anxious around people and couldn't get the time straight. So all of the things that were in place for him in high school were really great. But when that dropped away, we got to see what the deficits really were. And we're working on it. And he's, you know, he's doing a little bit better. But we were looking at all these other things. And he's a smart, smart guy. But he needs help in these areas. Um, another student that I work with, and this is a student who's actually in a, in a transitional program, had done well in high school, had started college, very bright young man, but pretty impaired with autism, probably mid-range autism and hard to understand sometimes, but very bright kid, went to college, didn't do well, um, 
tried a transition program, but it only lasted two weeks because it was in a city, and it turns out that he didn't know how to cross the street without <laughs> noticing that cars were there that could potentially hit him. And so it became a safety issue. And this is something, he lived in a pretty rural area up in New England, and so nobody had thought about that, but now he's in a city and he's not paying attention to the cars that are crossing the street. So here's a skill that this young man needs to learn. So he came home for a while and now he's in a new transition program and they're working on a very fundamental basic level with him on things like getting up in the morning and going to the activities that he's supposed to go to. And the fact that his roommate wanted to move out because the apartment was so nasty because he wasn't cleaning it. And so breaking that down, saying, okay, this is what it takes to clean your apartment. These are the expectations that we have. Um, So here's the positive part, okay? What can you do? I encourage families to teach as much independence in the home as you can. We tend to coddle our children as a culture. And particularly when our kids have disabilities, we tend to really coddle them and do more for them than we should. Um, and you know, you can go home and sort of take an inventory. What do you do? for your child and what is your child capable of doing and generally speaking they're capable of doing way more than you think that they can and it's time to really test that out and and raise the bar on that and so if you're getting your child up every morning you have to think about that what is this going to look like after high school what is this going to look like when they graduate if he's not getting up on time and he gets a tardy and you say, you know what, I'm not going to get you up anymore. Here's your alarm. Let's figure this out. The consequence in high school is that you get a tardy and maybe you get a detention. The consequence in college, if you don't show up for your class, is that you're going to flunk out. So better to do it while he's home and to suffer that consequence. Because my experience is kids don't really like those consequences. But if they don't have a chance to experience them, then it becomes a problem. Um, so I encourage everybody to raise the bar on what, whatever you think your child is capable of, he or she is capable of doing. Maybe not this much more, but certainly a little bit more. And to take an honest look at what your child has trouble with and to really work on remediating that. Don't just ride on the fact that your kid's smart, but look realistically with a professional, with somebody about what he can and can't do on my list of what you need to be independent. And are there areas that could be remediated or you could receive some therapy for? Um, it's also, this is, people don't like to hear this, but it's okay to not go to college. You can actually learn a trade and make way more money <laughs> coming right out of trade school than you can getting a four year degree in college. And so maybe your child has a propensity towards carpentry or something else, and you know, nurture that. Find the, the kind of internships or different um, environments where your child can be an apprentice or learn how to do those things. And they may be making more money than you pretty soon. Um, and get support for yourself. This is not easy, it's not easy to parent. Um, kids with these issues, and it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, and, um, and it lasts for a long time, but, um, and you all know that because you're in it, um, but anyway, thank you. Thank you.